Okay, folks. Uh, welcome to Coffee with Job on Tuesday morning. A uh, beautiful day, and I guess you can tell where I am from this. We are continuing to look at Job 29, which we've talked about it being the prime of life. And I want to read from verse 7 to verse 17. When I went to the gate of the city and took my seat in the public square, the young men saw me and stepped aside, and the old men rose to their feet. The chief men refrained from speaking and covered their mouths with their hands. The voices of the nobles were hushed and their tongues stuck to the roof of their mouths. Whoever heard me spoke well of me and those who saw me commended me because I rescued the poor who cried for help and the fatherless who had none to assist them. The one who was dying blessed me. I made the widow's heart sing. I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my robe and my turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy. I took up the case of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the wicked and snatched the victims from their teeth. That is just absolutely brilliant, isn't it? There's just so much about that that is just, just wonderful. These were the days when God watched over him. His steps were drenched in cream, as we saw yesterday. And he was the chief man. He was the most respected. Now, it does seem a little bit to give the character of what will I say, a Jane Austen novel where the village squire dispenses charity and justice. We may not like it, but it does actually speak of a society where righteousness and justice are integral. We learn here a great deal about the Israelite ethics and what I would call the Judeo-Christian ethic, which has been very much part of Western society. Moral conduct is social. It's not just about avoiding certain specific individual sins. It's about how we treat other people and how our society is run. Um, as I just look out at this, I just think of, of how this city is run. Job had a life of dignity, respect and moral righteousness. He helped the poor, the underprivileged, the dying, the blind and the lame. Material prosperity and social honour go together with the opportunity to do good to those in need. And I think that's very important that we recognise that the wealth that we have and the positions that we have in society are actually for the good of others, not for ourselves. That concept of public service. We should have the right attitude towards wealth. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, we were looking at this in... in uh, St. Thomas's and you know there's just so much in this in 1st Timothy particularly about wealth and uh, you know St. Thomas's is a congregation with a lot of wealthy people and the, I think these are challenging words godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it but if we have food and clothing we'll be content with that those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and have pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance and gentleness. Job was a wealthy man and let's be honest, often wealthy men are not loved. They are, but Job was, he really was. I was eyes to the blind, I was feet to the lame. I made the widow's heart sing. He helped the handicapped. He helped the poor. He made the widow's heart sing. That's, wow. I mean, imagine that on your headstone. I made the widow's heart sing. I think that's just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful testimony. And I hope it can be true of us as well. So I leave you with this beautiful setting. And I hope and pray that we would see life in its prime as being there to serve and to help people. And if God has given you money and many other things, it is for a reason. God has blessed me in, in so many ways and I want to use it to bless the poor. And I pray that the Lord would keep me from all the idols of wealth. And it's, it's not easy. Ah, well, we're going to Go, I'm adding another, we, we did Holy Night yesterday and I'm going to do a Holy Night again, 
but this time it's from a carol service that I spoke at in St. Basil's in Artarman. As you can see, it's mainly Chinese people. Um, just, honestly, just a wonderful congregation and group of people. But it was great in this setting to see people looking out over the balconies, people wandering in, coming in, of, of many different backgrounds. And just what a wonderful opportunity to present the gospel of Christ. And I hope that you will know that, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye. See you.